Hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Simone Bailey. You may recognize me from such shows as Stargate SG-1, Battlestar Galactica, Smallville, The L Word, and the, need, the video game Need for Speed Most Wanted, to name a few. We have a very special show lined up for you today. We will be interviewing television star Sharon Taylor. But before we introduce our fabulous guest, I would like to take a moment to welcome the fans and everyone tuning in at home. Thank you so much for joining me. So I would like to introduce my fellow interviewers. Joining us on the panel today are my co-host from Orville Nation. Please welcome PJ. Hello, PJ. Thank you for being here. Thank you here. for having us. Come on. <laughs> and from my homeland and birthplace, Calgary, Canada, we have the lovely and talented Raquel M. Briggs. Welcome, Raquel. Hey, thank you for having me on the show. Yay. All right, you guys. I am so excited to welcome our featured guest today, Sharon Taylor. Sharon is one of the top working actresses based out of Vancouver, Canada. She has an impressive resume working in TV and film. Her credits include, okay, get this, Stargate Atlantis as Amelia Banks, Smallville, Supernatural, Riverdale, The X-Files, Altered Carbon, Bad Blood, Ghost Wars, C, The 100, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Once Upon a Time, Fringe, and Need for Speed Heat, to name a few. She has also trained in martial arts for over 20 years and has her second degree black belt in karate kickboxing. Please give a very warm welcome to the beautiful and talented Miss Sharon Taylor. Hey, thank you hey, for Sharon. having me, Sloan, everybody. Awesome, I'm so glad you're here. So I would like to dive right into the conversation and I would like to say ladies first and let Raquel fire off the first interview question. Go ahead, Raquel. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Simone. Oh my goodness, I am such a fangirl of your Sharon. You are so talented. So I guess my first question, I'm just bursting at the seams to ask you this and, and I'll preface it with the, my explanation. One of my favorite scenes that you've ever done uh, is on Stargate Atlantis you, in the Prodigal um, episode. Connor Trenier was in that one. Uh, uh, Picardo was in that one. Of course, uh, the gorgeous uh, Jason Momoa. But you stole the show. There was, uh, not only did you <laughs> deliver your lines expertly, but there was a super intense moment where the station was being taken over and you wind up in this hand-to-hand -hand combat scene. And, you know, the producers didn't realize you're a second degree black belt. And so I, I just, I have to tell you, Jason Momoa gets into a huge fight beside you. Then you take over and you show how a pro does it that front kick, you are amazing lady. So I gotta ask you, have you ever considered a professional career um, in, in any of the combat sports? Never as a professional career because in interestingly enough, um, I've wanted to be an actor since high school. So I was always acting. And then after high school is when I got into martial arts. So for me, the acting was always first and the martial arts was always second. Um, so because of that, I've been able to use my martial arts and do action female character roles um, and doing my own stunts and such. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I, I couldn't do any like professional or amateur ring fights because this is the money maker. Yeah. And I, can't, I don't want to I couldn't do any damage. <laughs> don't want to do any damage to the yeah. face. Yeah, you don't want to ruin your face. But at the same time, you know, I have to tell you that front kick that you did could rival Anderson Silva. So not only did you put Momoa to shame, but I mean, Anderson Silva's got to worry if he fights you. That front kick, fabulous. Yeah, uh, well, actually I was pretty proud. It's actually called a uh, leading jump spinning hook kick that I did at the very end. And okay. like the, the footage is not speed up or, or anything. It's actually me doing the kick. So I was pretty proud of that. And then one of my uh, other girlfriends, she watched it and she was like, oh, so they got a man to double you, huh? No. Yeah, and I was like, that's not a man. 
I'm like, that's me. I did it myself. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that the, your footwear was kind of funny uh, for that sequence. They gave you these huge running shoes. We call them running shoes in Canada, but I should just say trainers for um, people over the pond and people in the United States. But those were some pretty massive runners. Like they had like aerobics runners on you. They and I felt. Like yeah, those are the, you know, the military grade costume running shoes that all of the like Stargate characters that work on the ship wear. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> they're you're not so the most graceful. flattering or easy to jump around in, but yeah, it was the, the first thing work. I noticed. Yeah, yeah, it was the first thing I noticed, but I got to tell you, you were still incredibly graceful, even though you were basically wearing cement boots. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what was actually cool about that scene, too, is that I'd already shot seven or eight episodes and I was just sitting there uh, one day while they were readjusting the cameras in between takes. And one of the producers sat down beside me and he said, so what do you do for fun? And I said, oh, in my free time, I, I train a lot. I, you know, I do martial arts, I have my black belt. And, and he was like, what? <laughs> and literally the next thing I know, the next the very next script, um, I'm reading through it and, and suddenly my character's in a fight scene. And I was like, that's so awesome. I was so excited. It's actually, so even though I'd had my black belt and I've been an actor, it was my first fight scene ever. And I got to that do it. Amazing. Oh, yeah. this is something I didn't know. So this is huge, right? So you must have been a little nervous. I was pretty excited. Yeah, I was pretty excited. And yeah. then what was really cool about it is like almost exactly 10 years later to the day, I got cast in the pilot of C with Jason Momoa. And I got to do another fight scene with like him. Uh, we were obviously on the same team in Stargate Atlantis and we're on the same team again on C. So I got to do two fight scenes with such a, like an awesome action star. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah, well, you're a powerful woman, and it's obvious that uh, you are gifted in martial arts. This isn't a, you didn't buy that belt. This isn't a Sunday belt. This, <laughs> uh, this is just excellent, excellent work. I was just so impressed with you. Wow. Aww, you make ladies. You. you make. Do you want to show it, TJ? Well, we can't show it because you'll get flagged. Oh, uh, we can't. Show but it. we can see a still image of that. We can see still. Okay. Image. Oh, okay. That's not the best. You should see the the this kick that she does when she walks right up to him. Just takes her foot and sticks it right in his chest, and the guy looks like he wants to die. Just well, excellent choreography, excellent like she's powerful. And you know it was really weird, guys, because usually you see these stunt people doing it, but it's so weird. It was almost like watching Bruce Lee because her center of gravity, she was exactly where she needed to be. It wasn't a, a stand-in doing it, and she was. She was just so impressive. You got to watch Prodigal, Stargate Atlantis, and then you got a fanboy or fangirl Sharon Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. What was also, too, is the stunt performer in that scene, um, Paul Lazenby. He actually has become a friend of mine since then, and he is an ex professional fighter. So when we did that scene, he was like, You can just kick me. Because at first I was like, okay, I'll just kind of like tap you. But he's like, nah. He's like, I can dig it. He's just like, it looks like better it. if you just kick me. Yeah, right. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's why it looks so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sharon, you're giving us all the dirt. I love this. All the secrets. <laughs> this is terrific. Wait, you said Lazenby. Any relation to, uh, to the James Bond actor? I don't think so. Okay. No. No. Sharon, I think that our fans in the chat would absolutely love to get a shout out by you, if you don't mind. For sure. Okay, I can <laughs> see that we have um, uh, the Fortune Barber with us, and Troy Pacelli, and DJ Odyssey, and Derek McManus, and Tibbs 3D, and Birds of Prey 5, and Louise XS. Well, I guess she's Louise X Sparrow. And um, that's what I can see right now. Oh, and Joe Shepard and Richard Asp Aspden and, okay, who? Eliahu Hernandez, Nanette Paselli. Hi. Okay, there's tons of fun people here. That's who I can see from my side. From all over the world, everybody here today. They're all from all over the world. Ooh. 
Yeah. Hello, chat. I hope you're enjoying having this beautiful woman. Oh, Call out your name. Steve Conte. Arconte. Yeah, I know we actually have some people in France as well joining Ooh. us today. Yes. You Fluggerville. I am Boxy. Oh, it just goes on and on. There's so many interesting people here with cool names. I kind of feel like I should have made oh, my Oh, nice. Thank you more so much, Supreme Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. That's amazing. Sharon, what were you like growing up? You know, something interesting, um, uh, I, I, uh, growing up, I was a watcher, not a, I, I didn't participate always. So like as a okay. young kid, I didn't have a lot of friends through elementary school. I kind of just like hung back and did my own thing. I often just went to the library and read a book or I would just like watch and just pick one person who looked free and I would go play mm -hmm. with them. So, uh, and then when I was in high school, of course, as soon as you like get boobs and hair and all the other <laughs> stuff, then suddenly I was like, and then suddenly it was, I realized the power of sexuality, mm. uh, which, you know, as a woman, you use only for the power of good. And uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I learned that I was a great observer of human behavior. Mm -hmm. Which I think you have to be as an actor. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think that that's kind of like one of my strengths as an actor is that I, I'm more of a watcher. I like to like sit back and kind of assess the situation before I dive in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I heard in an interview you say that you were either going to be an actor or a police officer. Ooh, yeah, is that so true? In, yeah. So in, um, in Canada, it goes up to grade 12. So grade 12, mm -hmm. they do like the big career day. So then you can go to like all the different like stations and meetings and find out like what type of career they're going to talk about and what you're most interested in. And I went to the... Um, listen to the professional actors speak to that meeting. And then I went like down the hall to the next room and I went and listened to the RCMP, uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police go speak there. So I was, I was either going to be a cop or an actor. And interestingly enough, <laughs> I have played mostly cops in my career. <laughs> yep. So wow. I, get to do, I get to do both the two things I wanted to do, cop and acting. Do you think actually, if, if acting wasn't existing, you would still try to do it via a uh, police officer? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I might. I actually, I actually worked on a show. I'm not going to like say any names or anything, uh, but I did work on a show. And one of the actresses, she didn't want to come out of her trailer. So I had kind of befriended <laughs> her a little bit. And then uh, I... I was, uh, I had seen it. She opened her door and I was like, hey, and just started chatting. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, why don't you come on out? We'll do the, 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 like, just, just being friendly. And then she's like, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I'll come out. I'll come out. And so she came out of her trailer. And then the assistant director that was standing there, like, he turned to me and he goes, holy crap, you should have been a cop the way you just talked her down. And then I was <laughs> I want to be a cop. <laughs> I love it. I think you would have looked great in an RCMP uniform, especially, uh, you know, for the ceremony with the Royal Canadian oh. Mounted Police when they're on the horses. And the hat. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if you can see it there, uh, PJ, uh, PJ, but on my Instagram, I have a, uh, like, a picture of myself as a full, in my full cop outfit with the I'm gun belt and everything. It's from, I'm like, last summer. But it, it's like, and a couple of my friends were like, I can't believe you posted that picture. You look awful in it. But I, but I, what? Yeah, but I was like, that's okay. That's what cops look like. It's not the most flattering outfit. That is so funny. I want to see it now because I, I, I imagine Sharon looks good in like a burlap sack with mud on her face. How could anyone ever say she doesn't look good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sharon, get up, Aquaman. Thanks. Thanks. You're very kind to me. I'll come on your show anytime you want. Yes, please, baby. Yes, please, yes, please. <laughs> oh, how, oh, oh, Warren. Okay, so uh, I can see there's a question from Warren and it says, how did you and Simone meet? So I've actually met Warren a couple times at different Stargate conventions. And uh, Simone and I have done a bunch of Stargate conventions together. And that is where we met. 
we're both on Stargate, but we are in different franchises. Simone performed in SG-1, and I worked Ooh. in Stargate Atlantis. But um, we both got hired to do a convention in England, and that's where we first met, and which was really cool because we're actually from the same city, and we have tons of the same friends, but we just never quite crossed paths. But at this convention, we, we became fast friends. Well, I think yeah. mostly, too, because we both just um, appreciate uh, life, I think. And so I, as soon as I met her, I was like, oh, my gosh, I've met a soul sister. And that's truly Aww. what our friendship has been, I feel like. Yeah, um, and we've traveled together and go for hikes together and dinner, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. We have and since then, we've had lots of adventures. And I'm wearing Actually, the necklace Simone's that you really gave. good at getting me out of my comfort zone. So, <laughs> uh, but she's always like, she's like a cruise director and I go visit her in LA. She's got like a list. She's like, okay, so we can do this, 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 or this. And so she takes us to like all these interesting places and see cool mm. sites and museums and dance parties. Um, uh, last year, for example, there was a, uh, a do-over New Year's Eve party that she took me to. It was one week after New Year's, and we went to a nightclub, and we dressed up as though it was New Year's, and we did a New Year's do-over. And Which is great, because New Year's is just so much pressure. And yes, if it wasn't... I agree. If so it it's better New just Year's. to have no pressure and just have a fun night. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Oh, what's this photo? Is that the one you're talking about? Oh no, that's just um it's further down. It's like um it's about like last summer, so it's like about a year ago. Maybe uh, even exactly. like two I was ago. I will keep looking. But I'm where I'm like as a cop with like the full gun belt and my hair slicked back. Like oh. it's not the most flattering look. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to ask you, Sharon, how did you how did you um land the role of Amelia on Stargate? Like how did the were you, uh, cause I think you, before that you were, you participated in one episode, right? As a different. Yeah, that's actually kind of, that's kind of a, a like a funny story also because um, I was just kind of starting out my um, acting career in TV and film. I, I was like mostly a theater actor. And then I auditioned for this smaller part as the replicator technician in an episode. And Stargate fans will know that replicators, they are essentially, there we are, that's, um, the replicators are essentially the bad guys. So uh, I did that episode and literally about like six episodes later, my agent calls me and like, oh, they wanna bring you back. And so they send me the script and it says that I, my name is like Amelia Banks and I'm a female technician on the actual um, the Stargate Atlantis ship on, on Atlantis. And then I called my agent and I was like, oh, that's so, I had gotten so excited that I was like coming back on the show. And then I said to my agent, oh, they've made a mistake. Like I am, uh -huh. I, am I was on the bad guy ship before. So I don't belong on the good guy ship. So, and then, so my agent's like, oh my God, you are the first actor to ever like try to talk yourself out of a role. <laughs> but <laughs> most actors are like, sure, I'll take it. But, uh, he called the casting director and the casting director said, no, actually, no, they actually liked what she did as a replicator technician. So let's bring her on to the main ship as a regular technician on Atlantis. So, so they then thought I you looked really me. smart, I guess, huh? I, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. And then I get to be Jason Momoa's love interest by the end. So like, it's a win-win for me. <laughs> that is pretty hot. I like I that you cared you. about the storyline so much that you were like, okay, hey guys, I got to flag this down now. <laughs> That's right. And so I actually said that to a couple of the producers. I said, oh, I was on the bad guy ship before. And so now I'm on the good guy ship. How's like, how the audience is going to perceive that? And then, um, and Joe had said, he's like, well, the replicators, they replicate people and images. So potentially they had Amelia Banks's image and DNA and they just replicated her. So she's, there's a version of her on the replicator. <laughs> and I was like, I, I love, love science fiction. We can That's, make sense of anything. That was Joe Malassi, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, so people are uh, you rooted for? Oh, someone rooted for the replicators in Atlantis. Boo! Mm. Yeah. I, I well, I would love to play a Vulcan. That would be fun. 
<laughs> yeah. One day maybe I'll make it on Star Trek. That's my next goal. Yeah. That would be really good. That's great. So, so tell me, what was do you have any oh, annoying boy. habits? Tell us. Well, <laughs> tell us. Well, first of all, let's, let's start with your pet peeve. What annoys you about other people? And then can you tell us what you do that you know for sure is super annoying? So <laughs> I have been very particular about washing my hands since about like 2005. So when the Wait, world why 2005? I'm just curious. Oh, just because I got really sick. Oh, okay, okay. Point, like really sick. And then I was like, I never want to be sick like this again, like a horrible yeah. flu. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, wash my hands, wash my hands. And so like I make the people around me, like when my friends come over to my apartment, sometimes I'll be like, oh, here, I have some hand sanitizer for you. And I'll and, and so my friends and family have always made fun of me that I'm like basically like a psycho about washing my hands and using hand sanitizer. But Turns out I was ahead of the, of the curve. <laughs> and if we had all been washing our hands as diligently as I had been. Right. Had been Sharon could mess, have saved us all. What? Sharon could oh. have saved us all. That's right. <laughs> Sharon Taylor saves us all. Yeah. Not just the station. I was the world. Put that on my bike. I was gonna put it on my bio. I'm like Sharon Taylor, been opening doors with her sleeve since 2005. <laughs> which is true. You should update your profile. By the way, the bio. first episode as Amelia was named Quarantine, right? Yes, I you're right. What? I didn't and even then you did another that. one that was called Infection. Another episode was called Infection. Oh, I love that you just noticed that. I'm I'm tweeting that for sure now. And you guys <laughs> wonder why she obsessively washes her hands. Look at what we've done to this woman. <laughs> yeah, it's in my art, in my life. Yeah. 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 Well, then people make fun of me, too, because they're like, if you wash your hands so much, you're going to get yourself like sick because you're not going to have the natural, um, you know, antibodies or organisms or bacteria for your body. But I said, no, don't worry. I'm work. I train at a martial arts studio four times a week and I have people like sweating all over me and we're yeah, all in bare feet and crawling on the floor and you have your face. <laughs> and, like and I was like, it's a miracle. I don't have a staph infection from like having my face against the mat. So, it, you know, I'm all good if I wash my hands a little bit extra. Yeah. And there's nothing paranoid about that. Like when you go to the gym, especially when you're uh, doing grappling arts and things like that, that is an actual concern. There's no paranoia there at all. It's an actual concern. Like when you get home, you you really have to shower down. True. And I, like, I'm actually not joking when I say staph infection, lots of martial artists do get yeah. like, because people walk around outside or they stick in, stick in dog poop or wherever, and then they're walking inside on the mats and the floor. And so yeah. most schools are very good about trying to keep the floors clean, but mm -hmm. you know, whatever, there's the odd moment where it's maybe not. And then you, um, you can get sick. Yeah. Or, sure. or pink eye. No, I'm just mm -hmm. kidding. Um, mm -hmm. I thought you said to me too, because you are a, a double black belt that, didn't you just recently humble yourself by going to train in a whole different type of martial arts than you're used to? <gasps> yes. What did you do? What did you do? Spill your guts. I, I signed up for jujitsu. So now I do jujitsu mm -hmm. and I have a white belt wow. now and I suck. I suck Which I was it. surprised because I can't imagine you suck. Yeah, in. not for long, oh. you guys. Don't believe her. It's not going to be for long. It's just she's when you're a second degree black belt and you are as good as she is, you're you're going to have high expectations of yourself. So there's going to be a bit of a learning curve. But when Sharon says she sucks at jujitsu, do not believe her in six <laughs> months. She will pretzel your ass. <laughs> so Paul, Paul Jenkins, are you? Are you in the chat, Paul Jenkins? If we have a female Ninja Turtle here for your next, you know, when, oh, you, when, wow. you, revamp, uh, when you redo the Ninja Turtles. Yes. <laughs> that would be amazing. You wouldn't I even have, need a stunt person. We have a question from oh, the question. chat. Oh, uh, ever have I ever regretted turning down a role? Um, I've only had to turn... I, own, I had to turn down my first role last year because I booked two roles on the same day. I booked Altered Carbon and then another really big role on another Canadian show. 
So it was very hard for me because I had to choose between the two shows because I loved the role on the other show. It was so juicy and interesting. But Altered Carbon, I had watched the first season already. I was already a fan of Altered Carbon. People view it all over the world. So um, when I really had to think about like my career and what I want to do, I, I chose Altered Carbon because it, it's Altered Carbon. Mm -hmm. Well, and also, what was it like working with the Falcon from Anthony Avengers? Mackie is, Anthony Mackie is so much fun. He, uh, like if you Google him and you watch some of his uh, interviews, he's like that in real life. He's really like quick witted mm -hmm. and he's, he's like chippy and he'll like, he'll crack in jokes right, left and center the whole time. Even when we're on set, right before we're about to roll, he'll be like, blah, 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 blah. He's just like throwing stuff out. <laughs> it's very funny. That's amazing. The Canadian yeah. show you're talking about, are you talking about Frontier? No, no, it's a different Canadian show. Oh, okay. Because yeah. my husband saw pictures of you with Declan Hart, AKA Jason Momoa, and he was freaking out. He's like, look at what, look at, look what she's doing. How did we miss her? Was she That's, on Frontier? No, that, that, those pictures are from C, the Apple TV oh, show. Oh, are those from C? He was sure mm -hmm. they were from Frontier. And yeah, then we thought, oh my, she's going to be on Frontier. No, we, I mean, we live in the woods in C, so it's a little bit okay. of the same, but less snow. Thank goodness. Actually working on C, I will tell you, was one of the hardest shows I've ever worked on in my life because physic there we go, physically, uh, it was pouring rain every day and it was October, November, and we're wearing fur and uh, leather. Oh, and it smelly. Absorbed, smelly. It just absorbed the wetness. Yeah. And we were so cold, so cold oh. all the time. And even Jason Momoa, who's a very, you know, a very boisterous man, like who's yeah. always like, hey, there was days where he was like dead silent and everybody was just standing there like <laughs> silent because we were frozen. Yeah. Uh, but visually it looks stunning. I don't know if you, any, if you ever get a chance to check it out. It's on uh, the first episode of Apple TV is C and it's, oh yeah. And there's like, a there was a oh. real thing. Falcon on I set. Seen this one. I, I, I have to watch <laughs> wow. this. Look at how beautiful you look. Oh, thanks. I Great love, picture. I actually loved the way they did my hair and the costume. Yeah. And she just looked so, the character looked so fierce. And when you're an actor and you get to put on the costume and get your hair done like that, it, it really like, it brings out something in you. You feel strong. Mm -hmm. um, and the cool thing about that bird they were using it in the show uh, because they were like getting footage of the of the bird traveling and sending messages to the bad guys. But that bird actually works full time at the Vancouver airport. Oh, its, wow. its main job is to scare away other wow. birds that might get in the way of the airplanes. Yeah, and Very take down funny. any drones. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It's wow. funny that you should say that uh, you f that you feel more empowered by really good costuming and that it helps you get into character and it's very immersive for you because you know that uh, your your beautiful soul sister said the same thing when we first interviewed uh, her. She was talking about what it was like to be in the leathers and she just said, you know, Raquel, it made me feel so much more connected to the character. So I love that you two are best friends. You guys are soul sisters. And you two sweet ladies said the same thing. I love it, love it, yeah, love it. It really is, it really is. You know what's, as an actor, I don't know about you, Simone, footwear, mm -hmm. I, it changes how I my character walks and moves. Like the, the footwear of the character is very important to me. Oh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. very cool. There was a couple other questions on the side here. Did we want to take a look at them? Yes, please do. You know what? This, oh, this yeah. show is all about you, baby. So, you know, uh, people are going to ask you personal questions. And you have such an extensive portfolio that we have to allow the chat to get at those questions with you because, wow, you've done a lot of stuff. So rock and roll. Oh, Warren's back. Would you ever jump to movies? And that question is for Simone and myself. You go first. And actually, yeah, well, I mean... I would love to do movies, but uh, there's a lot of television shows fil filmed in Vancouver. So that's where I live is in Vancouver. So I've gotten to do lots of TV movies, but not a lot of feature films that you would see in the theater. Mm -hmm. How about you, Simone? Well, I just went out for a TV movie not so long ago, still waiting to find out. Um, but I have done, there's a movie 
gosh, I don't know what streaming it's on, but it's called Life Partners that I did with Gillian Jacobs, Adam Brody, and um, and some other people. Um, Kate McKinnon is in it. Uh, and then I did Good Luck Chuck opposite Dane Cook. Um, so I've done, you know, a, a few movies and all the, all the things uh, over the years. But yeah, I, I, I agree with Sharon that TV is kind of calling us. And that's where we end up going. <laughs> well, I don't know I, about I would you guys, to. but I, I've never watched more TV in my life in the right? last three weeks. <laughs> right? Oh my I've been to watch at least four shows now. So, What are you watching? I finished Ozark season three. <gasps> oh, I haven't um, finished yet. I, I finished The Outsider. I finished Killing Eve. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then I even watched some of the, I finished Tiger King and I finished Blind Love, which like I'm embarrassed to say I watched it, but I kind of wanted to know what everybody that. was I talking about. It yet. <laughs> oh, it's a dumpster fire, but like you can't help but watch it and, and you feel deep and lasting shame. But uh, yeah, everyone's watching it, despite the fact that it results in deep and lasting shame. <laughs> so um, can you show the screen? Oh, yeah. I, I just wanted to uh, share this picture because Corin is a friend of the channel. So our, our, our fans, your, your fans are going to appreciate. Uh, Hi, Corin Nemec. <laughs> Corin. Is he we here? Love Corin. That was a funny day because that looks like we're standing in front of a, uh, like a wax figure or museum or some kind mm. of photograph, but we're not. We're actually, there was a real Beatles tribute band on stage with this giant plastic Stargate on the stage. Like it was, it's like everything happening in one picture and a dog. Wow. Like, and a dog, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the dance floor and, and that was us mid dancing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Simone, wow. and I, Simone and I like to dance. That's, and that was at the GateCon convention in Vancouver. So you were That's dancing right. with a dachshund. That's very cute. That's a great <laughs> name of a song. Right? Yeah. Dancing. It sounds like a, uh, I was going to say, it sounds like a Billy Idol song. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we could get our pout on. We could be like, dancing with a dachshund. <laughs> <laughs> Who's dog is that? It was um, a fan at fan the convention. Oh. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Sharon, I want to ask you what it was like to work with this very special actor, but as a director. So you were directed in Ghost Wars by none other than Jason Priestley. Yeah, yeah, Jason Priestley. Um, he, he, uh, cause I grew up watching Beverly Hills 90210 and it was one of my favorite shows and I had to watch it every Wednesday night with my friends. And um, it was Wednesday, right? I'm pretty sure. And uh, <laughs> she <laughs> still remembers, I love it. Because it was like a thing. It was like, we'd all get together and watch it when we were in high school. And um, he was such a pleasure to work with. He was so much fun. He was so great. We had the same drama teach, like from theater school, we actually went to the same theater school for a bit. So we had the oh, same wow. oh, drama so teacher. Cool. And so when I was in theater school, people would say, um, uh, people would say, oh, who's gonna be the next Jason Priestley to come out of this, out of this theater school? And, and you're like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I worked with him. I worked with yeah. him and I go, hey, uh, hey Jason, you know, I, I went to the same acting school as you. And they always used mm -hmm. to say, who's going to be the next Jason Priestley to come out of the school. But you know, they don't really say that anymore. And he goes, Oh, what do they say? He's like, cause they say, who's going to be the next Sharon Taylor. And I was like, that's right. <laughs> I love that. Boom. <laughs> yeah. He's just, I'm weird. He's a lot of fun. He's, su he's such a, like a, a smart director and, uh, and, and a great person. Great person. Cool. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I see that um, Supreme Heretic, his last name is Taylor also. Yes. He was so, talking with uh, me Hello that. to another Taylor out there. Yeah. Uh, Drew actually has his own show. 
called the Pegasus uh, podcast, Pegasus actual podcast. And we talk about Battlestar Galactica. And so he has quite a following. And when I told him we're quite good friends and I, I co-host with him on that show. And when I told him that I was interviewing you, he was like, Oh, she's a goddess. He's like, uh, have a good show with her. And would you please tell her that, uh, one tailor sends his love to another tailor. So, Oh, I love yeah. it. Sending my love back. Oh, okay. So a question from Joe Shepard. Hi, Joe. Uh, who were your biggest inspirations growing up? And, um, uh, you know, I, well, I, I love Quentin Tarantino movies. So uh, for me, my first movie that I saw in the theater when I was young, I like not one of my first movies, but the first movie that blew my mind was True Romance. Oh, and yes. If you look right behind me, that is the poster from the movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> on the wall there, behind me. That it's my favorite movie. So when I saw True Romance, I obviously written by Quentin Tarantino. I was, that blew my mind, and I thought to myself, I'm like, that's the kind of films I want to do, and I want to like be a part of, and that I'm like so drawn to. It's just, and then of course when Pulp Fiction came out, I like that like boggled my mind also when I was young and I thought that to make a film that was non-linear like that it was kind of one of the first that did that that jumped through time and really kind of like kept it engaging um so that's why I that's why I I, I am Quentin Tarantino I would say is probably like growing up one of my favorites good choice So our Bonjour. Need for Speed fans would love to hear what it was like working on Need for Speed Heat. Matt. Yeah? Oh, Simone. Hi. Did you just ask me a question or is yeah. that? <laughs> Sorry, you, you, you stopped as well. Um, I was just saying our Need for Speed fans would love to hear what it was like working on Need for Speed Heat. Oh, I'm just a cop. Oh no, she's having trouble with her Wi-Fi. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. there she is. Okay. Hey, I don't know why that happened? It says that my Wi-Fi is like going, but you know, who, who knows? I think why? it's because everyone is on at the exact same time. Oh, okay. I'll just make sure my computer's. If it persists, that. we can tell her just to take off her camera. Yeah, she can just uh, uh, do the interview with an avatar. Although we'd love to look at her beautiful face. Yeah, we have to look at her beautiful face. Yeah. Okay, am I back? Uh, you could also tell her to plug in instead of being wireless. If she has a, the option to put in an Ethernet cable, that would also assist greatly. Are you plugged in? Mm, I don't. I, I mean, my laptop is plugged into the wall, but I, I'm not plugged into an Ethernet cable. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, me neither. Can you see me at all? Yes, we yeah, can. You're good now. Yeah, we're good. Oh, beautiful. Don't worry. We got you back. You're back, baby. Oh, great. This is good to be back. <laughs> um, the question was Need for Speed Heat. Yeah. Uh, yes, I play a cop in that. So it's just my voice. I'm not an and I'm, I'm not a, like an image or a character. And you just hear my voice going, we have a black Ferrari traveling down Center Boulevard. So... Well, our fans wanted to know if you play video games. I don't actually have any access like to playing video games, but um, I grew up with an, a giant old PC computer, IBM computer, and I would play Rosella and like all those adventure games, like choose your own adventure games. And so like I would go through all the choose your own adventures and solving the puzzles. Those were the kind of games that I liked. That's fun. What was it like working with Academy Award winner Anna Paquin on, because you were a series regular on the show Bellevue. Right? Yeah, again, I'm a cop and I play her partner, <laughs> like her police detective partner. So she's, she's great. She's, she's a fierce woman. She stands up uh, very strong. She believes very strongly in, in like human rights and I admire her for that. And she just was incredible because she would work 
long, long days on set and then go home at night to her two children who were only oh, wow. four, years, four years old at the time. And her husband was away in, um, in England shooting a film. So she was like, she had help, um, like a, a nanny helping her, but ultimately mm -hmm. she was the only parent, like working all day and then going home at night to the kids. So like, oh. I have so much respect for her. Like that is like girl power at the, mo at the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what's, actually your role? what's your dream role? Like if you could work with anybody and, and on like, or on, or you could go on any show right now, What's what's your perfect place? What's your what would be your next move if you had your choice? I love like what Jennifer Garner did in Alias, where she gets to kind of kick ass and be all sorts of different female characters. Right? You too? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm all yeah. about all about the wigs and all about the oh, dress my God, up. You I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, cool. I found a lot of cop pictures actually. Um, I have one if she wants to, if uh, Simone wants to share. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because there's the uniform form cop and then there's the sexy detective. cop, you know, yeah, the detective y, you know, the high heel cop, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's um that's Courtney Thorne Smith from Melrose Place, which was yes. on right after Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> <laughs> so Sharon you started in theater would you ever return to the theater I would happily return to the theater but um you know let's be honest it doesn't make the same money that mm -hmm. tv and film does so if I were to book a tv show that actually like ran more than one season or I didn't get killed after the first season <laughs> you could go to Broadway on your hiatus yeah right? yeah yeah then I would I, I would happily like know my own schedule so that I could do theater in between. But um but I unfortunately I can't do that because it like I gotta I gotta make money and and, and TV and film is ultimately I love that too. And people might not know this, but you also write. I do. Yes I do. I have a um a few scripts on the go and um, a script that I co-wrote with some friends. We they just finished uh, shooting, so mm -hmm. we have like so. So yeah, hopefully, especially during this this pandemic now, where the film industry is shut down, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to spend more time writing and getting my scripts all finished and off the ground. What's your favorite genre? Mm -hmm. If you're writing, what are you writing in? What genre are you writing in? Science fiction, thriller. What are you doing, Sharon? Dish, you please. know what's funny is they're almost they're all like my the TV series that I'm writing and the the feature that I'm finished that I've actually started sending out to people they're they're all action comedies because like oh you know, I love that action comedies is such like a great genre mm -hmm. okay I mean True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger that movie just like killed me like I laughed so hard throughout that movie but it was so fun. So a lot of the stuff I write is action comedies. So with like big giant fight scenes and then like all these ridiculous things happen. Yeah. Oh, DJ Odyssey is asking, um, how was it working on Smallville? Smallville was super great too. I was in the ninth season, which um, I mean, when Smallville came on television, uh, it was on the cover of Rolling Stone. It was groundbreaking. Like people were bananas over Smallville. So I think by the time I showed up, which was, thank, that's, that's my character, Feora. So by the time the ninth season, um, I, I, I know a lot of people weren't watching it as much, but like the diehard fans were still there. And I think you can start watching it again now, like one of the streaming services now actually has all the seasons. But uh, yeah, I, I was, it was great. So I was in the whole ninth season as one of like the super villains. So if you saw, if you saw Superman 2 with, Christopher Reeves and um, General Zod and Feyora and Basquiat, they come out of the spinning glass from the Phantom Zone. I actually got to be that 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 person, that uh, Feyora. So I worked with Callum Blue who played Zod and him and I became fast friends and we're still friends and it was amazing. And then Tom Welling, he was incredible because he was the number one actor on the show he was producing and he was directing some episodes and literally they would hand him a script and he could just look at it and 
boom, he had his lines memorized like that. And I thought to myself, okay, when you're doing a TV show for nine years, I guess that's what happens to your brain. And I really hope that like one day that <laughs> that happens to me. Yes. So how do you remember your lines? So how do you remember your lines then? Uh, for me, I remember my lines by, I run them with friends. Like I'll call somebody, I call my mom a lot and I go, can you run these lines with me over the phone? <laughs> Sharon, my daughter is um, is an actress here oh. and she does a lot of uh, local theater. She was in Lady Windermere's fan, uh, oh, Oscar cool. Wilde. And, and she's, uh, I have to tell you, my daughter comes home and she stands in the living room and uh, we run lines together. And it is the biggest a compliment you could ever pay your mom to have your gorgeous daughter calling you on the phone or standing in your living room running lines because you know that you're the person that helps them remember you are an amazing daughter on behalf of your mom what a great thing to do you're the best daughter ever I love that you said that and your daughter is going to remember that that you spent the time doing that forever and one day she'll be doing an interview with a bunch of cool people and she'll be talking about you. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> My mom loves running lines with me so much that sometimes she'll call me and be like, so um, do you want to run lines? Do you have anything to run? Like she actually wants to run lines with me. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> She's proud of you. I mean, what's not to be proud of? You're beautiful, you're talented. I'm, I'm so excited to find out that you're that you're a writer. It's so different interviewing somebody when their best friend is on the panel with you because we're getting to find out so many wonderful things about you. And you know, Simone loves you so much because every question has been a, a way of extrapolating some really cool thing about you uh, and, and uh, she's very proud of you. Well, I'm very proud of Simone too. Like she is one of my best, best girlfriends and I, like, I call her my lighthouse. Because <laughs> she is like my little lighthouse. She's always exuding bright and light and yeah, love. Yeah. And, um, she and is. People, I think people are, like drawn, people are drawn to her for that. And yeah. that was something I recognized in her right away. As soon as we became friends, I, I thought to myself, this woman is quite extraordinary. Like people are drawn to her light. And I guess I was obviously one of those people too. And I'm thankful that I got to be embraced by it. Yeah, you you guys are wonderful. Can I ask you a serious question since we're on a serious note and, and it's touching on nostalgia? May I please ask you, beautiful lady, what is the first thing that you're going to do once uh, this whole thing is over, once the whole quarantine is over? What's the first thing you wanna do? And you know what? It doesn't have to be something extravagant or even important. It could even just be a simple little thing. And I'll give you a few uh, seconds. No, to I think already about know it. the answer to that. It's gonna make okay. me cry. I'm gonna hug my mom and dad. Oh, Sharon. <laughs> oh, oh, Sharon. Oh, oh. Oh, Sharon, you have no That's idea beautiful. how much that means to everybody at home because oh. I'm going to be spending my first ever Easter without my daughter. There's a clean and it's Sharon. breaking There's a clean my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, what a beautiful oh, and thoughtful thing to say just and um, everybody compassion. just loves you yeah. and everybody's feeling that same way, sweetheart. So the whole world is just embracing you right now and, and we definitely feel that also. Yeah, and you guys too. I mean, I can just see by who you are and the fact that Simone has told me all about you and connected with you guys. Um, I'm honored to be here and just thankful to like meet really um, interesting, beautiful humans because at the end of the day, and I think that's what this pandemic has really like uh, opened people's eyes to is that, I mean, we connect, we can connect digitally like this. Um, obviously it's so much better to be like to hug someone and to actually like hold someone's hand and those things feel really good. But yeah. uh but but to really uh, listen, because I think digitally we, we end up having to really listen to yeah. each other. And that's something that I think the, the humans in our society were lacking a little and we'll bit, be, just really we'll, taking the time to listen to each other. Yeah. We're all going to be better people for this somehow. Some, somehow oh, good, some good will I come. I think so. I think there's a softening and it's very humbling and, and you just have a lot of time to push the reset button. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Yeah, really. Yeah, well, I hope your mom watches this show because uh, you are a beautiful, beautiful daughter and a wonderful person, and I'm so proud to have met you. I just think you are just terrific inside and out, lady. Oh, Agreed. thank you. You too. You're here. You too. you too. Do we have any more questions, chat? Oh, which uh, was your um, favorite show to film, and do you have a favorite character? Big love. Big love back to you, Joe Shepard. Um, my favorite character is uh, Rose on Bad Blood, which is on Netflix. And that is the most proud I've ever been of a character and a TV show and, and an ensemble. And uh, Kim Coates is the star of that show and he's also the producer. And um, Michael Conovis is the producer and writer. Michael like co-wrote most of the episodes and they created an incredible story of, um, it's, it's about the Montreal Mafia. So it's a crime thriller. And it's about uh, trying to get control of the drug trade in Montreal, Canada, which is for seasons all true, based on a true story, which will blow yeah. your mind. If you watch it, you'll be like, this really happened. They, yeah. were, they were walking into restaurants, blowing each other's brains out. Like, yeah. It was the New York Mafia that came up north into Montreal. So season two is fiction. And that's where my character comes in because I got to be a series regular for season two. And um, I'm, I'm, that's the show I'm most proud of. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And what was it like working with Kim? He's great. He's so much fun. And um, like one of the first times I worked with him, we're, our characters are standing behind um, like around a corner and then we kind of like they yell action and we're supposed to come walking in. And so before the act, before the director even yells action, he turns to me and he's like, where do you think he put the drugs? And then he starts like <laughs> improvising. And I was like, Ugh. I'm like, oh my God, we're improvising right now? <laughs> Nobody told me, but I was like, okay, let's do it. I'm in it. So we would do that. Like he would just like start improvising right before the director yelled action. And then we would just come in hot. And it really works. I mean, we learned that in acting school, but when you start doing it with really other amazing actors, it really like gets you into the zone. It's a fantastic way to work. And he's super intense. So I could just imagine what that would be like. He's so experienced. He yes. has such a huge portfolio. Yeah, um, he was in yeah. Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, and and everyone just, you know, he's very intense. Like you believe him as a character. You know, he could, you know, be a very, very famous character actor. I mean, I think he already is. But uh, to have a, uh, somebody do that to you, you're like, wow, whoa, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, people Very forget cool. he was actually, he, he had a, a small part in Waterworld with Kevin Costner and he played like this like twitching, this guy that was like literally twitching. And I don't know if you remember, but he was the character that like pulled his boat up beside Kevin Costner's raft and he wanted to take the little girl and he was like, I'll pay you for the little girl. <laughs> and he was so creepy <laughs> and like, weird. And then if you look back and watch that, you go, oh my God, that's Kim Coates because yeah. He's such like a solid, stoic badass in shows like Bad Blood and Sons of Anarchy. So uh, the guy can do so much just in stillness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super intense. Great story, Sharon. Great story. So Sharon um, has been doing another lead on a series out of Calgary, I believe, called Jan. And it's a sitcom. And I think our Dark Matter fans would love to know more about what it was like working with Zoe Palmer, who played yeah. the android on Dark Matter. Do you know something cool about Zoe is that my friendship with her, Simone, reminds me of my friendship with you. Like, because oh. I met you, Simone, and I was like, oh my gosh, we have to be friends. And I don't, I don't actually feel that way very often and with, with people. And when I met her, I right away I was like, oh my gosh, we have to be friends. Cause we have the same sense of humor and she's always up for an adventure also because you know, here we are, we're both in Calgary, like away from our, our friends and family. And so she became the person that I, that I hung out with and we did, we did kind of funny things and we like went and rode mechanical bulls together and we went and did like anything <laughs> that we, 
<laughs> I love that That's story. I don't know if you want to share that story, but I love that story. So. This is a great story. She just she just told a random story where she was all right. I love this story. <laughs> Well, we were we were in Calgary, and we're like, God, we are in Calgary. Like, this is cow. It's called Cowtown. Cowtown. It's yes. like lots of people <laughs> wear cowboy hats, like as their regular clothes. Yeah, and cowboy boots. Yeah. So I said to her, I'm like, we should go somewhere and ride a mechanic. We, like, we're in Calgary. We got to ride a mechanical bull. And so we're like, okay, sure. So we went to this rest this bar and went to. They had a mechanical bull, and then a couple of the other actors and the director of the show joined us, and. Uh, it was at, it was like, it was right at the end of filming, so the director was like, "There's no way you guys are getting on that mechanical bull." He's like, "What happens if you like bonk your faces or something, and you end up with a black eye?" And like, "No," he's like, "No, you're not allowed on that mechanical bull." But we're like, "Oh, okay, okay." So then we're like, "Well, I guess we're not going on the mechanical bull." And we kind of, but then she, her and I are looking at each other, and she's like, "That's the reason why we came to this bar is to ride the mechanical bull." <laughs> so then, um, you know, everybody was chit chatting, and then Zoe just like gets up and walks away, and she's like, "Let's go, we're doing it." And then so we just went and lined up to get on the mechanical bull, and the director's like, "What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing?" And uh, we uh he so the next thing i know he comes over and he's filming and he's like i am filming you guys he's like so, <laughs> you make sure that you don't get hurt what but, uh, yeah so it was right at the end of filming so it all turned out fine and everything was okay but uh like she's always up for an adventure and that's what i love about her and um what was cool for her and me is that this is like the first comedy sh that was the first comedy show for both of us like sitcom Sitcom, like yeah. literally sitcom where we're like having these awkward moments and interacting with awkward characters. And um, season one of Jan is on Crave and season two, we just shot this this fall and it should be out within the next hopefully month or so. We'll see when they release it, but like it should be out pretty soon. And, and again, we have like all sorts of adventures when we're in Calgary together and it turns out she's super funny. and when we first started shooting, I turned to her and I said, you know, like, I'm like, I'm actually kind of nervous and scared because I've never done a comedy before. And the and same with her. She's like, yeah, me neither. Like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. And then so we just decided, I mean, at least for myself, I, was, I thought, well, I'm just going to like be truthful and react how mm -hmm. a real person would react. And I guess that's where the comedy comes, comes from, from the awkward moments of truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a great have, way to put it. From we the have a question from... Truth, our, our truth. That's what a great thing to say. You definitely are a writer. Comedy comes from the awkward moments of truth, guys. Beautiful quote, Sharon. Oh, thanks. And I am Boxy is asking a question saying um, the TV series I did called Aftermath. Uh, yeah, I did a few episodes of that and it was like an end of the world show, um, apocalyptic. So I guess you know, all these sci-fi shows I've worked on have prepared me for my <laughs> current existence of being locked inside my apartment, uh, <laughs> which is fine. I actually, like I said, I, I don't, I'm, I'm happy to be locked inside in my apartment to keep my friends and family, to keep my parents and my grandparents healthy and safe. And yeah. Well, and I know that you life. go for a lot of hikes. Are you currently allowed to go on hikes or did they close the parks in, um, Vancouver. Well, that tr that Quarry Rock Trail, Simone, that you and I do mm -hmm. is closed. Oh, um, yeah, it's a, a beautiful big, hike. Gorgeous. Yeah, a lot of the big hiking trails around here are closed in Vancouver, and mm -hmm. um, but there's still lots of woodsy areas. So I'll I'll still kind of go for a little walk in the woods by myself and get some fresh air. It's kind yeah. of that's part of my mental health is because like I did a lot of hiking before the pandemic. And for me, that's actually been one of the hard things is to like not being able to go outside and do stuff and or go to my martial arts school. But that's okay. It's um, not forever. And the sooner we, um, the longer we, and more, you know, efficiently we stay inside, then the sooner this will be over. Yeah. Sharon yeah. is one of those people that legit gets her 10,000 steps in every single day. And when she was visiting me, we would do it and she'd look at her fit is it a fitbit she'd look at her yeah. fitbit and be like oh we're short and so her and i would just march on the spot until we hit it and like put on some music have a little dance party 
Yeah, well, it shows yes. in both of you. You both have rock and bods. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? Come on, you Thank guys, you. Are great. whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Thank you. We have a question from the audience. Sharon, have you ever taken a role that you wish you hadn't? Ooh, it's a loaded question. Oh, that's, a question. Mm. that's interesting. No, I so far. Well, only in a you may not want to answer that or on an indie production, perhaps, because I know I've been in situations like that. Yeah. And something oh. you're comfortable with saying, uh, don't don't feel pressure to say things that yeah, um, you, you feel definitely. uncomfortable. You wouldn't want to say something to offend anyone. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, <laughs> well, I, I did a theater show once where I had to kiss a man who was I was not attracted to and who was like not Ugh. like he was like, Ugh. and then every night I would kiss him and I would sometimes turn away and I would dry heave. This is horrible. I was so careful. <laughs> I didn't know that I was dry heaving, but I would be like, <laughs> I would literally do that. And then like, I just, oh, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Yeah, you shouldn't because, you know, it's very awkward. It's very weird. You know, people think acting is so easy. It's like photography. People, everybody thinks they can do it. And the real uh, truth of the matter is, is no, everyone at home, no, you can't act. It's actually a discipline. And um, it can be hard sometimes, you know? Uh, sometimes when my daughter has to kiss people, I'm like, ew, why? In the last couple of years, I only have had to kiss like really awesome people. Like my first TV kiss is with Vincent D'Onofrio. So I was like, hey, I'll take that. Like he's such an <laughs> amazing, beautiful, interesting man. And then like since then, you know, I've I've gotten to uh kiss Kim Coates and um and the other Simone from Altered Carbon and uh, and Jan Arden. So like really beautiful people that I really like as as per, as people. So then you I don't love mind. Jan Arden. We we actually interviewed her at a radio station here, um, a six thirty Ched. We did a we did an interview with her when I was with Ched. And uh wow, she was such an amazing uh person to meet. Uh, she hugged me. She wrote a beautiful little note to my daughter. And usually my daughter was at work with me and she wasn't. So Jan wrote her the, the sweetest little letter and said, when you go home, give this to your daughter. So, and I gave it to my daughter. Oh, mom, I love Jan. But she's a very interesting and cool chick. So I could just imagine the way you two would talk off air and, and just together, you guys would just, ooh, I would love to be I, a fly on the wall with a martini. <laughs> I love her, I love her. And you know what I actually said to her, like as I play her girlfriend on the show, and I, I turned to her one day when we were filming and I said, it's very easy to be in love with you because <gasps> oh. she is so easy to love as a person, just Warm. so genuine, so Warm. genuine. Yeah. So warm. She'll just hug you. She'll uh, she'll listen to your stories. She and she genuinely listen to them. She cares about you, and she just. It seems like she has an inexhaustible heart and energy for for other people. She's a she's quite a person, and uh, I think it's terrific that the two of you would be working together because it, it's just all heart, baby. It's all heart. It really is. And one of the most beautiful things that she says that really resonates with me, and I've I've kind of like watched her say it a few times when someone is talking about something painful or or something that's happened to them and she'll look them right in the eyes and she'll say it's really hard being a person sometimes and that's just like hmm. it's true yeah. it's true yeah she's so hmm. uh she's so deep <laughs> that way yeah multi-layered woman any photos from that pj can we can we pump that up and show, uh, uh, you know, give some information on that or or yeah. Uh, so for the know? science fiction fans that are watching, Jan Arden became very famous in the 1990s for her song "Insensitive," which uh, Simone can uh, relay a few verses for us. Ooh, Take baby. It away, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, she can't. But um, you know. <laughs> Um, 
but yes, she's she's uh, she's an, a beautiful singer, and she's Jan Arden is considered one of uh, Canada's national treasures. Yes, yeah. and hopefully her show will get a little bit more traction in the United States, and people in the states can see how funny and and um, heartwarming her show is. I was on an airplane, and your show was on the airplane I was on. I was like, <gasps> and, but I was by myself, so I was like, <gasps> who can I tell? I'm gonna watch my best friend on TV right now on the airplane. I was like, ah, that's so amazing. I love it. Yeah. Um, I can see that David Lindbergh has asked a question, and I think it's actually a really good question. Oh yeah, nice. He uh, he asked if I had any techno babble lines on Stargate that I had trouble with. Interestingly enough, my very first line as the um, replicator technician, I remember it still to this day because that's the first time I'd had to do any kind of techno babble. And even like it was, it's pretty straightforward. But my line was, "There's an anomalous energy reading in the second quadrant of the communications tower," and. I still remember it to this day because I had to say it over and over, over to myself, over and over and over. And I'm not good with techno babble at all. Like I know some other actors are that I didn't, that Simone and I are friends with. Mm -hmm. They are very good at it, but that is not my thing. I can do cop talk. Like I can talk about like coroner's reports and dead bodies and, and the like, perp. <laughs> yeah, all that cop stuff all day long, but not medical or digital. Uh, for the question from the chat, uh, Raquel, is that a Tribble it on your desk? Good. Yes, it is, and it's the official one. So it it uh, makes all oh, of the uh, official noises. Look at that oh Tribble. That's so cute. So there you go, science fiction fans. Yes, my office is filled <laughs> with science fiction uh, paraphernalia. It's absolutely ridiculous. I love that they noticed that. <laughs> Oh, so Joe is asking again, um, how have I been spending my time in quarantine? Do you have any hobbies? Well, this is, I was telling Simone this earlier that I kind of wish I had, I, I have been more productive with my writing, but um, there was something about, and I'm sure other, I've talked to other people who they, they felt very similar when we first, you know, were put into quarantine, I did not feel motivated at all. I didn't wash my hair for days. I stayed in my pajamas. And I one day I watched 13 hours of television in a row. And then I was like, ugh. <laughs> but, but I just like, I couldn't feel motivated. And it wasn't, I don't think, it wasn't that I was depressed. But then I read this article about the, um, about like people actually feel lethargic when they're mentally in a state of unknowing. So I guess it is a little bit of a temporary depression, but it, it, yeah, it didn't feel good. <laughs> I want to pull up this photo. There you are with, is that Zoe Palmer and Jen Arden? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Where By is the that? Way, Sharon, I think everybody went through that, uh, sweet lady. I definitely felt like this sense of denial when this whole thing started. And then I felt really sad. And then I felt really angry. And then I decided to clean my house and my yard. <laughs> uh, it was funny because Simone was talking about how people have taken to doing things that they, that they felt they didn't have time for before, like baking and cooking and things like that. But you know what? I think everybody felt that little tinge of, I'm like you, I wouldn't call it depression, more kind of like, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Like, what do I do now? I don't want this to happen. There's, I would actually use the word mourning. You have this sense of mourning where you can't touch people and you can't get out and do the things that you want to do and the things and see the people you love. So you know what? You're totally not alone. And I wouldn't use the word depression either. I think mourning. I think we are all kind of in mourning. That's a great word. That's a great way to describe it. And actually that brings me to like, what are you guys going to do as your first things when this quarantine is over? Well, um, I could actually start a crying all over again and I will do the ugly mom cry because the mm -hmm. first thing I want to do is kiss my daughter's entire face and I want to smell her hair. Oh, 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 I'm sorry that you can't do that right now. Yeah. How about you, PJ? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to be, uh, I want to get out and run and do stuff like just yeah. do exercise outdoors. Are you a runner? I am. 
Mm-hmm. I used to run ultra stuff, marathon. Whoa. Long time ago. Long time ago. You run shows <laughs> and marathons? <laughs> he's, a, he's a renaissance man. <laughs> what about Simone? Well, I'm a concertaholic. I love going to live events because that just makes me come alive, is music. I love going to see DJs. I love going to see bands. Uh, when I'm you know, in LA, I love going to the Hollywood Bowl and, and all of these like cool venues to see a lot of um, famous people just in intimate venues. So I, I really enjoy that. I love the social dynamic and I am a very social person. Um, so that, yeah, it's definitely something on my list and I can't wait to go rent a bicycle and bike along the beach, which Sharon and I did in LA near the Santa Monica pier all the way to Venice, California. Mm. I love that. So that's one of my, that's one of my favorite things to do with you. That's okay. That sounds nice. Yeah. And it's so cool to do that because every 10 feet it changes, you know, all of a sudden you see these people like pumping iron and then you see people slacklining and then you see people, you know, doing monkey bars or whatever it is. Like, it's just it's and very chat, dynamic. We don't want to leave you out. Chat, we don't want to leave you out. It can be very therapeutic and really cool that we show uh, friendship and extend uh, the invitation to you. Uh, wh- why don't you throw your comments out there? Are you going to garden? Are you going to go and visit your grandparents? Are, are you happy to get back to work? Uh, please feel free to uh, share with us and, and, uh, and we'll highlight them on the screen. Uh, what you're excited about, about life returning back to normal. Mm-hmm. Well, while we wait for that, we have a question for Simone and Sharon. Do you consider yourselves pop culture nerds? If so, what are you a fan of? Ooh, very good question. Simone is like crushes pop culture. Like she crushes it when it comes to like music trivia, all sorts of things. I got to say that I'm like, I'm way more on it than most of my friends. I will make references and things like that. People are like, oh, they don't even know what I'm talking about. But that's because television and Netflix and the internet is actually a big part of my, is a part of my life. Um, And I'm always surprised by people, especially actors who are completely disconnected and removed from that because pop culture influences so much and it's going to influence the way the writers have written the scripts. It's going to influence the way the producers see the characters. So I Mm -hmm. think, you know, performers and actors do a real disservice to themselves if they're not up to date in pop culture. So I do. I do try to stay always on top of things. Mm hmm. Simone, do you want to read what the people are writing in the chat? Oh. Yeah, give them a little bit of catharsis. All right. So Warren wants to go back to the gym and meet with his friends. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I had just started going to a gym, and I really enjoyed it. And then I was cut off. (laughs) So there, there it was. Thank God I didn't do the membership. What else did everyone say? Someone wants to return to sports and being. Oh, right. Thomas Potts. I want sports back. Yeah, that's a big thing. Oh, Oh, he wants to watch sports. Yeah, like NFL. And the poor Olympics. Yeah. 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 Hi, Thomas. DJ Odyssey. I have to go out. I work on a farm. Mm hmm. Oh, that's cool. I want a haircut. That's my husband. My husband, it he looks a, l- a little bit like the like um, Bjorn Ironside from the Vikings. And so my husband's beard is like massive, and he's a big bear. Like I, that's my nickname for him is Bear. And so he has this huge mess of hair right now and a massive beard. And I swear, if he went shopping, he would scare people because he looks like a full on like Viking right off the show, The Vikings. It's- Are you gonna try and 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 cut it? Oh, I don't know. I, like I might have to. <laughs> So I had a funny thought. I thought, like, wouldn't it be funny if couples had to cut their own hair and we had our own reality show where, like, all these couples were, like, sending videos. And then, actually, I tweeted it, and then someone sent me a message and was like, you should do that. Ask people to do that and compile it and make a a show. I was like, oh, that's a lot of work. So if one of you guys want to do that, (laughs) wouldn't it be funny? 
David Lindbergh says, I'm looking forward to so much after this, but I am hoping we come out of this better people. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Too, David. What a lovely yeah. thing to say. Yeah. And I hope the skies stay really clear. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful weather here in Vancouver right now, which is... You know, um, you sit outside on your patio or, out, you know, in your yard. And that definitely, like, uplifts the spirits a bit. When it was pouring rain here, it was hard. Oh, yeah. It's really hard when it starts to rain a lot in Van. And then mm -hmm. it, like, it's days and days of rain in Van. And you just feel like it, the cloud will never lift, literally and figuratively. True. Yeah, today I just opened up all of the blinds. I didn't even care. I just, I need to be in the sunshine because, yeah, I'm feeling you guys. I'm totally feeling you. It, it makes such a huge difference. It really the does. Heretic says, I'm going to get a haircut as well, and then I'll go to the gym, and then I'll go to the bar for karaoke and a chilled shot of Jack. Maybe two. Maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so sure, good. Oh, sorry. Nanette asked, um, what was the worst role that we ever played? So I said mine. Yeah. to kiss somebody. What about, oh, what was yours? The worst? And remember, you don't have to overshare. You can make this very... I will, tell you, I will tell you something that I did not appreciate. <laughs> I mean, I don't like talking about negative things, but... You know, us as actresses, you're quite vulnerable because I am very willing to go a lot of places, right? I am willing to tap into certain um, characters and, and really make myself vulnerable. But I once got a role on an independent uh, production. And, you know, sometimes those are challenging because you're not guarded by you know, union rules or things like that. And mm -hmm. I was supposed to do a simulated uh, sex scene, clothed, right? And on the day, the director encouraged me to drink alcohol, which I did not want to do because I don't think that that's necessary. And I just really didn't want to. And he just kept saying, oh, no, no, drink this vodka, you know, and I'm not a vodka drinker either. Um, at oh you know we'll just add mixer or whatever and so i you know reluctantly you know my co-star was like oh yeah do it you know like let's all drink together and i just was like okay um and then the director wanted me he's like simone i just this isn't working for me i don't really believe it i would really love if you could take your top off and i just thought number one you are not paying me you know <laughs> nearly like what i would be you know, one is that, but also that was not the agreement and I don't appreciate things like that on mm -hmm. the day. Plus I also didn't appreciate that he wanted me to consume alcohol, which I thought was very unprofessional. And the whole thing made me feel very uncomfortable because I was the only female on set. And of course this is before the whole Me Too movement. And I've had, you know, quite a few, um, instances like that where they decide you you want a certain thing and Have so it's hard because there's a fine line between making art and then when it goes into this kind of almost porn feeling thing yeah you know well, and that will and it's really not fair it's not fair and, to and there's also a problem there go ahead sharon sorry sorry that won't that doesn't happen anymore now because yeah. of the me too movement mm -hmm. and yeah thankfully you know, productions are being held accountable for the for requests like that. Yeah. I mean, I could see if like, I could see the old school directors trying to get somebody to like, to not feel nervous. But the problem is too, that if he's going to go ahead and ask you to take your I wasn't your nervous. Top, <laughs> no, wasn't I know, that. I know. I was I know. nervous. I was, I was perfectly fine at my job. But if yeah. like, if, yeah. if, if it's, if it's, uh, it sounds to me very much like, like, uh, it's, um, you know, having you consume alcohol to then make a less, an uninhibited decision later on when he's going to ask Absolutely. you to do that. It's just, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, really... he was basically trying to drug me, you know? So, yeah. So that would definitely be one. Yeah. So what does your mm -hmm. husband think of that story? I know your husband is a pretty famous director, isn't he? 
I was looking him up last night and I was like, wow, like what a great couple they are. Like they're, they're a real power couple. And, uh, and he's done a lot of really cool stuff too. So yeah, it's, it must be different for you to, to not only like be with a director and know the way that good directing happens and then to have an experience like that. It's sort of just set you back on your heels, right? And I'm really super glad that you were able to stand up for yourself and what you believe in and just go, you know what? No. Yeah, you knew what to do. You knew what to do. And that's awesome that you knew what to do when that when that happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I have a question for Sharon, actually. Um, Sharon, where do you see yourself in like 10 years from now? Do you see yourself directing? Do you see yourself producing? Are you gonna are you gonna like make one of those scripts that you have that you're churning out right now? I I actually want to um, I mean I want to continue acting, but it, I have I made I made a vision board. I had a really lame mm. New Year's this year. I did nothing, and I sat with one of my other girlfriends, Lindsay, and we just made a vision board for New Year's, just two of us. <laughs> And on it, I put that I was going to write and produce my own TV show. And I put a whole bunch of pictures of LA around it. So that's my dream. Maybe 10 years from now. You just want to be, be closer to me? I no. do. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, we will so Thelma and Louise, LA. Say, we can, <laughs> Only like, not all the way. Oh, yeah, not all the way. house together. <laughs> we'll have a bunch of pool boys. It'll... <laughs> Hey, I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Look out, oh, LA. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you guys very much. That's very kind. Yeah, it didn't feel good. And I'm is so there... glad that she's powerful enough to go, no! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Um, Sharon, tell us about Snoop Dogg. That, uh, what's his favorite show? <laughs> No, not the other story. The, okay, no. So, <laughs> not the concert story. So, so I, um, it was a really fun surprise that while <laughs> we were finishing, like we just um, finished shooting season two of Bad Blood and it uh, it arrived on Netflix, suddenly like a bunch of people were like, oh my gosh, look what Snoop Dogg is tweeting. Snoop Dogg put on his Twitter and his Instagram, he was like, hot show alert, hot show alert. There's this new show, Bad Blood. He's, he, <laughs> he's like, and he's like, I'm not a producer. I am not affiliated with the show whatsoever. He's like, I just like it. I recommend it. He's to like, everybody. I'm not getting wow. paid, but you know, whatever. Yeah, and he's smoking. He's like, <laughs> I, he's like, I just like it. I just like it. And then um, and like Howard for? Stern like jumped on board, and he was talking about it <gasps> really? every day. He was talking about it every day on his show too. He's like, really? I can't stop watching this show, Bad Blood. So it was really exciting that That's all so cool. these like heavyweights in the, like you know in the industry were into mm -hmm. the show. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Shout outs always feel good, whether you're just a regular person or you're famous, or even if you're super famous. I'm always shocked to hear like the Oscar winners who are like, they really like me, this person. Oh my goodness, I I was starstruck. It's just so funny how powerful a shout out can be. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I've worked with other actors before who are, um, you know, I, I would look up to them and then they have like looked me up before, right before we're about to start working and they'll be like, oh, I really liked you in that show or I really liked you in Smallville or something like that. And I'm like, oh, You're like, oh, God, oh they actually know who I am? <laughs> How do you know me? <laughs> yeah. um, I wanted to go back to talking about C for one second. Now in that show, everyone's blind and what? you went to blind warrior training camp or something like that did you not yeah can you tell us a little bit about so that every single actor that is cast on that show including the background performers have to go through blind training they they hired this incredible man who is visually impaired to teach us how to move and behave um, as a visually impaired person would. So he, he, there was this giant room that he had set up with like ropes everywhere and we had blindfolds and they would turn out the lights and we had to like find our way and we had to communicate. And he created this entire world um, where, uh, because the story takes place 
like hundreds of years in the future where a virus has uh, made everybody um, <laughs> blind. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't say it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it comes from bats. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a pangolin. So, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, so, so, so on the show, uh, everybody is visually impaired. So we had to, like, it was pretty neat. There was a movement director that actually created a whole um, movement language for the actors to do. So we had to practice and do our scenes like that, where I, if you watch it, you catch us like touching each other as we go past each other. We're always kind of like touching each other somehow or our hands or like moving things along and having sticks to guide us. And, and then eventually I had a fight scene and then all the actors had to do the blind training. So obviously it's not safe to be blindfolded while we're rehearsing a fight scene, but um, they, they gave us a really cool way of like, you put your fingers in front of your face and you bring your hands to the outside and you try to keep your eyes still seeing your two fingers so your peripheral vision is engaged. Oh, yeah. And so when you continually move your eyes and your head like that, and then obviously your head moves towards a sound, not your eyes. Your head wouldn't swivel to a sound. It would be your ear that yeah. moves to a sound. Interesting. So that's the kind of training we ended up doing. And then when we did the fight scenes, we just had to like split our vision and kind of like blur your eyes. Wow. So when you were doing because did they actually teach you your choreography obviously right and then mm -hmm. so you would do it having not been blindfolded and then you could probably take a step right. back exactly that's amazing yeah. it's like a dance it's just choreographed anyway simone yeah. have you ever had to do uh extra training like that or some some type of school or or some type of of person who you've consulted to make one of your roles uh better or to prepare for some show I did go out for the lead of a series that I can't recall what it is, but it's a fairly new series where the lead is blind. And I had, I really enjoyed getting into character for that and doing much like what you said is, you know, I, I pictured myself, you know, utilizing my ears because I know that you're, you know, it's like when you're, um, asleep, your senses are heightened 30% more because you're not um, seeing. Yeah. Um, and I used to do that as a child. I would pretend that I could, it, like, I would practice as if I didn't have vision. Could I get around my family home without using my, my vision? You're an interesting and child. I would do it <laughs> well no I would no, I would be like okay how many steps are oh, the yeah. steps where's the railing where's the light switch I don't know I just thought that that was a an interesting exercise to do because if I ever did go blind knock on wood you know I don't um that I would at least know what that feels like maybe yeah mm -hmm. Sharon, I have another question for you. Do you mentor younger actors? Yes, actually, there's a program, um, a Vancouver Young Mentorship Program here in uh, in Vancouver that a, a couple local actors, um, Patrick Sibongi, who's on The Flash, he he's it's his program, and so he pairs up experienced actors with other actors that are just starting out. So he paired me up with this young woman who he thought we were very similar. We had, we're, we're very similar physically. She's, she was a professional dancer who is um, now working in TV and film. And so she was going out for a lot of the same physical type roles that I would go out for. So I, I would, help her with some of her auditions and I even said I'm like okay call me if you want advice on what to wear to your auditions and stuff like that so so yeah I, I like it I like helping whenever I can wow and did somebody did did some um older actors mentor you in in that way at, a, at certain no, points unfortunately that's where I feel like um I feel like I feel like I came into this business not knowing anything or anyone. And that's why it's like I mean there's a reason why I didn't it took me so long to meet someone amazing like Simone who was like in my own city in the film industry because I I was quite isol I was quite isolated. I had some like theater friends from theater school, but I had no friends that were in TV and film. Like I didn't know anything. I didn't even know how to get an agent. I didn't know anything. 
<laughs> so I just eventually like slowly like made a few friends here and there and here and there. And then I was in an acting class. Um, and then one of the other students said to me, you're, you know, you're very talented. Why aren't you working in TV and film? And I was like, I, I don't have an agent. I don't even know how to get an agent. And then this mm. actor was like, I'm going to introduce you to mine. So sometimes that's, that's so all nice. it takes is just having someone vouch for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that a woman so beautiful was a theater nerd because every <laughs> theater nerd community knows like oh, <laughs> somebody like Sharon and Simone being theater nerds. That's like, I know we, we both graduated with our bachelor of fine arts in theater. We're both yep. theater. And nerds. were you in a Shakespeare company as well? Yeah. With Neil Freeman. Your oh, teacher. That was my Shakespeare guru. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. her and I were both in separate uh, Shakespeare companies. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, wow. did Shakespeare. I did <laughs> yes, I would actually when I toured. I did five months touring, and we did two Shakespeare shows. Like we would flip one one night, one the next. Wow! So you, you had to have two in your brain, and then I, I was did. understudying another one. So if the girl got sick, I'd have to do my part and her part in the show so it was wow. like three parts in That's my brain lot. it's a lot. a lot yeah especially shakespeare yeah it's um, very dense i've been going to the free will shakespeare festival for 27 20 nearly 28 years wow oh cool yeah so i'm a huge i i think i have the bard here i gotta move there you go you can see him right there <laughs> yeah. does, like your daughter, does your daughter go with you pardon does your daughter go with you Yes, I actually took my daughter to it her entire life. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, no wonder she's motivated that way, right? You've yeah, she created really an artistically inclined human. Raquel's an amazing mother. She's Aww. just amazing. <laughs> How old is your daughter? 28. Oh, my goodness. You do not look like you have a 28-year-old. That's but, very kind you know. of you to say. We think I she's lying like to us, Sharon. Or we something. all think yeah. she's lying to us. <laughs> I'm nearly 50. Woo, wow. you look incredible. <laughs> When's your birthday? Pardon? When's your birthday? November. Of this year? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you going to turn 50 this year? No, thank God. <laughs> oh. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so big party. Yeah. Big party. Big so party. we had a question from the chat from Nanette Paselli. Uh, both of us, have we ever done our own stunts? You go ahead. Yeah, I feel like I've kind of mentioned it already. Like a, I do all, all my own stunts. I've actually only once I had a stunt double and it turned out she was actually one of my other best girlfriends. Her name is um, Janine Carlton and she doubles Angelina Jolie and like Kate Winslet and amazing actresses all over the world. And uh, she gets flown everywhere. And then I was working on Supernatural and my character, I did my own fight scene, but then my character gets thrown through a glass window. And a couple of my other friends were like, oh, why don't you just go through the window yourself? And then um, my agent and the stunt coordinator are like, no, no, we, we don't send the actor <laughs> through the glass <laughs> we window. We don't send the actor through the glass, <laughs> through the glass window. window. <laughs> so the stunt coordinator said, um, do, you, do you have anyone in mind? And I said, oh, my friend Janine, you know, can double me. And so, you know, I got my friend Janine to do it. But then what was crazy about that was as soon as I was about to shoot it, I suddenly felt super nervous for her because I care about her so much. And then oh, wow. I suddenly started to worry that here I am, I've recommended like one of my close friends to do something super dangerous. And then I started to feel like, like maybe like very worried. And then I was like, I'm so worried about her. I'm so worried about her. And I called some of our other friends. I'm like, I'm so worried. And they're like, that's what she does. That's her job. Yeah. And yeah. she, she like, she smashed, she smashed it. She <laughs> like, <laughs> she crushed it. She well, that's why it. they get paid Eating? well too. Uh, Philip Gaining, you said, unless you're Jackie Chan, I would just like to remind the chat that the lovely Sharon Taylor is actually a second degree black belt in karate kickboxing and is currently studying jujitsu. So she actually is uh, Jackie Chan. Uh, she could do any of those things very easily. The problem is, 
as she explained earlier in the show, is that we wouldn't want her to have a bruise on her face or to hurt herself or harm herself um, when she's on set, uh, because then, you know, then she can't act. But if you would like to see Sharon kicking some major I suggest going and watching Stargate Atlantis, Go and watch the episode Prodigal because she actually kicks butt better than Jason Momoa. She puts him to shame. Sorry, Jason. But let's get real here. She like Anderson Silva's this guy. Um, and she did her 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 own stunt. And I'm actually gonna put that link in the chat so you guys can check it yeah, out. Yeah, she's she is a kick-ass, amazing, powerful, beautiful woman. Not only is she strong and capable of fighting and uh is a learned fighter, but she is also sexy as hell. Oh my gosh, there thank you. you. <laughs> well, I've had a really wonderful time talking to you guys today. Like you um yeah, you've made my day. You've you've given me a purpose to brush my hair and put on some clothes. So <laughs> I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for you guys for that. I love it. I was going to also add that that's why I love going out with Sharon, because I know that I'm with a super uh, superhero. And so yeah. I just wait for somebody to mess with us. And I know well, I that I've got my body men right. off with Simone. I gotta beat the men off with Simone. I'm like, back <laughs> off, back off. She's with me. She's that with me. So Get away. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, earlier when she was talking about um, going and running um, in van, <laughs> uh, I was just thinking to myself, you know, if it were any other actress, and she was like, oh, I, I go running here. I go running in Stanley Park every afternoon or whatever. I would be like, no, please don't say that. But with Sharon, it's just like, yeah, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she would kick the guy's butt. Yeah, I'll funny. kill you with kindness first. I also yeah, see I... that Alyssa Alderman is in the chat, and she's <gasps> one of my oh! best friends from high school. I love you, and she knows Simone really well, too. We love you, Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. Thank you for joining. Alyssa, do you have any stories that you can share with us? Do you feel comfortable uh, typing something really uh, cute into the chat? Maybe... Um, I don't know. Sharon eats only purple gummy bears, and Simone, uh, you know, I don't know, puts M and M's in her pop oh, in the theater. She writes, you I do. You do. I legit do. I call that adding fun. <laughs> I always, when I have popcorn, I will always put either plain M and M's or raisinets or maybe like Reese's pieces in on top of my popcorn the problem is it looks like fun when you first do it but then they slowly start to sink and then you kind of have to add more why did i do this yeah but it's fun a little sweet little slightly I'm salty like i like the kettle corn sweet mm -hmm. yeah Alyssa, give us a story give us some dirt give us some dirt baby <laughs> but like a cute dirt not like sweet and salty, I, I, sweet and salty. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, the funny Forty and Barber, that, why would you mix good things with popcorn? Because it does <laughs> taste good. <laughs> Who doesn't love? Oh, Keely says we want more Stargate. Yeah, we do. That I'm a so Gator. True. I totally want you guys back. I want you guys uh, back on Stargate. I we need Stargate back, and you two need to play a huge role in that. And I don't know if you guys know this or not. But I will tell you, there is a huge movement on social media uh, asking for it back. Yes. Yeah. Sharon, would you go back to uh, reprise your role as Amelia Banks? Yeah, it would be so fun, right? It I depends, I guess, if you're available. You go, oh, thanks. But yeah, things are looking pretty open right now. <laughs> oh, wow. Alyssa just gave us some... Some oh. information. Oh my God, Alyssa! See, this is what oh. I'm talking about, Alyssa. I love I hope you. You guys were okay. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. There was real. There was no damage. I just was like, my when I was 16 years old, my mom won a five liter Mustang convertible oh, wow. from lady from Foot Locker, 
And so, I mean, five liter Mustang convertible isn't like such a big deal nowadays, but mm -hmm. you know, back in the day, it was like the coolest car ever. Totally. And so my mom is like the sweetest woman but almost to the point where she's slightly naive to the point where she's just like, sure, honey, you can do whatever. So she let me like drive her to work. And then I would take the car to high school and like all the time, like every day I had the car, I had her like super powerful Mustang. And I, I ended up getting in uh, two car accidents with it. Yeah. <gasps> but nothing like, it was like nothing. Like it was just like, like little tiny bumps. Wow. With like what? What did you hit? Another car or I rear-ended someone wall? one time. Oh yeah, the, the next thing I'll listen. I, I rear-ended someone one time and then the other time I was trying to turn right and someone else was coming and I cut them off and then they hit me. So <laughs> Alyssa, it, this is great. She missed her cue twice in dress rehearsal for a school play. <laughs> were you in high school together or elementary school with Alyssa, Sharon? High school. Um, and yes, we were in a school play together. And I don't know what I was doing. Well, I do know one thing I was doing. Uh, I was breaking up with my boyfriend backstage one night. <gasps> and um, Right before the show? Yeah. Yeah. But that's like, he, like he came to the stage at the backstage door and he's like, we need to talk. And I was like, well, okay, fine, let's talk. And so we ended up breaking up backstage, but I didn't, I missed my cue. So You're like, I I've got to go. go on. We are so done. Oh, just <laughs> that's exactly right. So then I missed my cue to go on. And then there was like this really long pause on the stage. And then I was like, <gasps> and then I ah, run on. And then at the very end of the, oh, and the other one, the other time it was her fault because her and I were gossiping. We're like, blah, 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 talking, talking. And then, and then after the show was over, the drama teacher said, in my 25 years of teaching, I have never, ever have a student miss their cue like that <laughs> twice. Oh, man. And I was like, well, fast forward, I'm gonna be a professional actor one day. <laughs> so man. Yeah. Oh, that is so funny. Elihu <laughs> says, mental <laughs> note, stay off the sidewalk when Sharon's driving. Yeah. <laughs> I've become a way better driver since I've gotten older. I like I did. I've gotten a few accidents as a teenager, but like uh, knock on wood. Fingers crossed. I've had no accidents as an adult. Thank you for the story, Alyssa. That was a terrific story. Thank you for sharing that with us and giving us a bit of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alyssa and, and Sharon once went as uh, Mario and Luigi to my birthday. <laughs> and oh, wow. seeing them in the mustaches was uh, pretty fantastic. Yeah. Hysterical. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and Simone was Jessica Rabbit, dressed up as Jessica Rabbit, and she was, Ooh. like, super sexy. But we were, like, cartoon characters united. Don't we have a picture of Simone as Jessica Rabbit? We do. Oh, name? yeah. I mean, yeah, I had... I had, had. Wait I had. a second. I think we do. We I'm do. Not, that just my imagination. No, we do. Oh. I had cut out Sharon because I wasn't sure if I had... Per See, that's Sharon right there, on, right beside oh. me. But I didn't know that I had permission to show Sharon... Uh, with the mustache, but that's me. That's as, fine. I don't care. As Jessica Rabbit. Really? Like, even if you had a mustache, it would not make you ugly, baby. You were one of yeah, the beautiful women. I had some man in the nightclub come up to me and he's like, I have never been attracted to a woman in a mustache before. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great line. Until now. And I was like, well. That's great. Oh, man. That's a great line. Uh, something else somewhat uh, the people might not know about you, Sharon, that I discovered while going down the Sharon Taylor rabbit hole, which uh, online, which is that you are a certified lifeguard. Yes. What? Yeah. I didn't find like, that. You're the oh, original you're Baywatch. You're the real thing. Did you have well, your like red? I was a teenager. Yeah. Had the red bathing suit at the rec center. Oh. In, like here. So yeah. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did all wow. That. Did you actually get to work person. as one and save lives? Like, yeah. And then even for, I'm also a martial arts and I, I, I teach every Saturday still for, I've taught for over 16, 17 years now, every Saturday of my entire life practically. And it's, I don't do it for the money at all. I do it because I love my students and I love, teaching and I love wow. being part of martial arts and I love martial arts. Well, so that's I another way to give back. Vancouver. I would totally take classes with you. You are just 
you are just such a cool chick. I would totally take classes with you. I mean, hear that, Vancouver? She better have full classes because this lady is awesome. Aw, thanks. And Simone is an incredible yoga instructor. I you know. Have taken, I've taken Simone's yoga classes before, too. And I was like, I, not only did I get like an awesome workout, but it, I felt like so good after. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like Simone and I can be tag team. Like I'll get your heart rate up and then Simone will like. <laughs> and then Simone will calm you down. <laughs> do her magic can calm yeah. you down. Yeah, yeah, oh. there, DJ Odyssey. Exactly, that's the right plan. They want to see a yoga martial arts stream. Mm -hmm. We could do our own <laughs> yoga martial arts video. On, in a well, they want to know what your favorite, our favorite foods to eat are. Well, mine is nachos. <gasps> I will always choose nachos. nachos. That's been my dirty little secret. That's well, it's not secret now, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, in quarantine, I never really had a thing for nachos, but now I do. And I did it last night, you guys. I did it last night. I said, okay, tonight I'm not going to do it. And I still did it. My little one, my mini plate. I've, yeah, I've had stop. a lot of nachos in this quarantine. <laughs> I was so thrilled when I. Like I'm at the bottom of the bag and I'm like, that's it. It's over. <laughs> and I go into the pantry and I see this whole new bag and angels start singing. I'm like, oh, bless my heart. <laughs> like I thought this through. I still have one more bag. That's so funny. See, nachos is a favorite of everybody. Other people yeah. like nachos too. Yeah. I can nachos think. are yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. I can teach you yoga that I think often when we don't like things, Maybe it's the way we were taught. You know, it's like Shakespeare. People don't like Shakespeare because perhaps it was the way they were taught it. So that's a good point. I can, I can turn some things around. Very true. Yes. When I was a kid, nachos were my favorite, says Philip Gaming. <laughs> Not anymore? Come on. Oh, time to queue at the store for chips. Mm. <laughs> Actually, oh, yeah. I think a lot of people in Canada are getting things delivered. We're not really queuing here, um, Mr. Hernandez or Mrs. Hernandez. Uh, yeah. We uh, we we get a lot. We're being encouraged to either do pickup or to do delivery. So basically, here you you make your grocery list, you order it, and then you get into a queue, and it takes two weeks to get your groceries. So the two weeks. Yeah, they've been saying on the news and stuff like that, please um, order your groceries a week ahead and always make sure that you're um, stocking shelf-stable stuff a week ahead. And I've actually been doing like one week shelf-stable, then the next week all fruits and vegetables. So, yeah, yeah, just so you know, everybody in the United States, uh, we're not really queuing here so much as we're being encouraged to to do a trunk drop off. So you pull up to the store and they drop it off in your trunk or, uh, yeah, full on delivery. And it's a no contact delivery. So you pay ahead and the store does it for you and then they bring it to your house. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of Canada and how um, uh, how our government has handled this pandemic. Actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, Gab Stargate says, hi, Sharon. Love your work. Hi. Join Thanks the club. We all do. Yes. Thanks yeah. for watching. She's a wow. pretty special lady. If people didn't watch it, then I wouldn't have a job. So I'm thankful for all of you guys. I watched you know what? We're still demo watching. reel. I watched her demo reel yesterday and I was just like, man, what a powerhouse. Oh. Thanks, honey. Yeah. We lost PJ. Yeah, I, sometimes uh, he gets kicked off the stream for bad behavior. No, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with it. I think it's just he's come. He's um, coming to us via satellite from Spain, so yeah, it he's might in just Spain. Be, okay, this is quite the international panel: Vancouver, yes. Calgary, L.A., Spain. Oh, thank you. Right? Yeah, yeah, that they is great. are. And they're also, they're person. also both really nice people. They're really kind and good people. Oh, thank you. So are you. Jaffa, what was that about Jaffa? Uh, he oh, would love the to person would love to cosplay a Jaffa. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Jaffa, what am I thinking? I'm tired, don't mind me. 
I, mm-hmm. I, I would have called it a Jaffa too. <laughs> yeah, well, that was, what was so funny. So when I first got hired on Stargate SG-1, there's, you expect in a script, you know, speaking of like space talk and jargon and all these things, like you almost expect there to be a uh, phonetic key, you know, just for people who are just brand new to the show acting on it, that you have a cheat sheet. And I noticed that there wasn't any. And this was before the time of live streaming. So you couldn't really just dial up whatever show you wanted to, you know, research. And I showed up on set and I asked Christopher Judge, um, I'm confused because I hear some, like Richard Dean Anderson would, you know, pronounce things one way and then Chris would pronounce things another way. I said, you know, how do you know which is the correct way to pronounce things? And he's like, we all don't know how to do it. We just like make up whatever. Oh my God. And he's like, don't worry about it. Just say, you know, the way you want to say it. Uh, that was so yeah, funny. Stargate, uh, that is exactly why I mixed up the uh, pronunciation. Because when I first looked at it, I wasn't thinking Stargate. I was thinking Jaffa cake. No, and but I think they are that... a highly indul- a indulgent snack. I just absolutely love them. They're ridiculous. They're like baby wagon wheels with jam in them. Anyway, it's, it's I've really never bad. even heard of that before, but now I want to try it. Yeah, there's <laughs> Jaffa. Gene Anderson would Jaffa. call it Jaffa. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> you're like. On, you're um, actually, that, on, on Altered Carbon, they gave us a pronunciation guide. All the actors oh, got a pronunciation guide oh, before we started work. And it was all written out phonetically, like names, planets, people, places, everything. It was very wow. helpful. Mm-hmm. That's really helpful because then it's like Simone said, you don't feel... Um, awkward and like wondering what you should, you know, like look at um, look at Star Trek data or data. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. It's a very convenient, mm-hmm. very smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, nice to see you back PJ. Yeah. Sometimes StreamYards bumps people, <laughs> but I got to say, yeah, you're, you're hanging in, you know, you've hung in like a trooper because these are these kind of marathon interviews that we do sometimes. And, well, uh, I can talk to Simone for hours. <laughs> like I, That's why I'm really appreciating this interview because I just get to hang out with you and see your lovely face and I've missed you so much. And you're somebody that I can't wait to hug again as well. I feel the same way. I would have been yeah. in LA right now, actually, if this wasn't happening. So... Yeah, Sharon, what do you think about this whole Simone Bailey uh, show thing she's doing? I love it. I think it's the perfect venue for her to showcase her incredible personality because um, her personality is one of her superpowers. She has an ability, like I said, like a lighthouse to like shine so bright and draw people in. So um, this is an absolute perfect venue for her. And I hope that she gets more people coming on the show here to talk to all you guys. Um, cause she's, she's, uh, she's pretty special and I'm thankful Aww, to have her as my you. friend. Thank you. Yeah. It's funny. I, cause PJ and I were talking last night and I said, I actually didn't tell any of my friends that I was launching this. Like I didn't actually talk to people about it really. I just went ahead and did it. Yeah. But it is a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's like right up your alley. Like it is so perfect for you. Yes. Right. Aww. She is. She's killing it. She is killing it. Yeah. <laughs> As a YouTube streamer. Well, Sharon, killing you it. are welcome to come back on the show anytime. Even if you want to be a panelist and interview people. Oh, that would be fun. Yep. Oh, what's okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, wait. Oh, Daniel. I meant to, Daniel, I meant to Daniel, show this. Sharon, are you saying she should do a song and dance? Oh, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you if you look at my Instagram, I posted a photo of Simone and I doing a little dance last night. So that was there so you get a funny. little teaser of Simone and I dancing. And I saw my pink Christmas tree that I bring up at Christmas time in the background. Where were we going that night? I can't even remember. Um, dancing? Sorry, can you hold on one second? <laughs> oh, hold on. she's got to take a call. That is so funny. Amelia Simone, Banks. why don't you mute her one sec? <laughs> mute her. <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh, there she is. There she is. Sorry, my landline is ringing. was ringing. I'm like one of the only people that has a landline. I know. It's like, what? 
That's so <laughs> funny. Um, Christmas tree. That, that was the night we were going to the um, the do over, the New Year's Eve do over. Oh, that was so great. Mm -hmm. And they did the three, two, one, Happy New Year. Yeah, that was really fun. I love it. I have had such a great time talking to you guys, and I do have to get going now. But yes. um, thank you so much for inviting me on your show and having me here. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Shana. You are the best. And I am so, so grateful to see your beautiful face and learn more about you. And, and I think the fans agree. Yeah. Congratulations on your YouTube streaming. And, um, and I'm so glad I had an opportunity to meet PJ and Raquel. Yeah, it was such a, a it was such an honor to meet you. Thank you so much for uh, speaking with us today and being so generous with your time and generous with the fans. You are an exceptional lady, and uh, just it was a great honor. Thank you so much, Sharon. Oh, thank, thank you, Sharon. you guys. It was a, it was so everyone, pleasure. I've put in the description below all the links to follow Sharon. She's on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. So please stay connected with her. Thank you so much, Sharon. Oh, thank you. Yay. Stay in touch. You guys soon. Okay. okay. Bye. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, she's just the best. Wasn't Isn't that a best? great interview? That was terrific. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, chat. Chat, thank you for being here with us today and for all of your great questions. I know that, uh, that Sharon really appreciated it. Do you um yeah absolutely do you do you guys do you guys want to before I don't know if Simone's up to it do you guys want to take five minutes of questions for Simone any questions That'd for Simone great. I think the fans would like that if Simone doesn't mind if she if Simone's sure. up to it chat so would you like a shout out would you, says, you thank you so much for this stream and for this great time thank you for share to Sharon for answering all the questions good evening to all all. And see you soon. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. She's wonderful. I am so excited to continue watching all of all of her future work. Because mm -hmm. she's just constantly killing it on all of the shows she works on. Yeah. Go Oh, yeah. Go yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was actually, I think, the name that I was um, referencing was Go Auld. I didn't know how to pronounce that at first. Oh, you're the best. Um, awesome sauce. Oh, I, a question from the audience. What is the most unhealthy snack I eat? You know what I love for breakfast are, they're similar to the, uh, pa the patty, the hash brown patties that you get at McDonald's. But I go to Trader Joe's and I get the hash brown patties from there. And once in a while when I'm feeling, you know, saucy, I'll put one in the oven and have it with my breakfast. And I love that. And sometimes if I'm really saucy, I'll put two in. I'm like, I don't even care about the calories. This is so darn good. So that's I'm something. seeing some some questions here, Simone. There are a few questions yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nanette Paselli, what is your favorite outfit that I got to wear on a show and did I get to keep it? Hmm. That's a great question. You know what outfit I really, and I actually asked the costumers was my Battlestar Galactica outfit. So they had me in this beautiful sapphire blue dress and these amazing high heels. I don't think we got to see the high heels that I was wearing on Battlestar, but it was just, I felt so sexy in that outfit. And I had gone to the costumers after and I asked, you know, I always ask like, can I purchase this? Hoping that they'll say, oh, just have it. Um, but they did not let me have it. <laughs> or purchase Aww. it and I was sad. But you know, I guess you can always try to track it down yourself. So no, I, I was not allowed to keep that one. But I do know some actors that get leather jackets and suits and all these things. I'm like, what? But I was given the 
emerald green, very low cut dress that I had uh, worn in Blood and Treasure TV series. And that show you can watch on Amazon Prime right now. And it's on CBS All Access. That's a beautiful picture, by the way. Do we have that on hand or close by? That is a beautiful, beautiful picture of Simone. She looks uh, just fabulous. Mm -hmm. Very, very sexy and elegant. Great, Thank great you. photo. Uh, Drew, Supreme Heretic, has asked, Simone, will you be our guest of honor on the Pegasus Actual podcast next week? I promise you'll have a blast. Well, I think... I would definitely love to come on your show and we should chat after this and, and see if the dates work out because I do have another stream coming up potentially Wednesday, let's see. Um, I, I still am finalizing details, but yeah, for sure. That's very nice of you to ask. Thank you. Do you want to tell us about the next stream? Do you know, or is it, do you know anything about it? Uh, I know that one of my great acting friends, Alex Zahara, who has been on many, many shows uh, such as Stargate SG-1 and Man, uh, uh, is it Man in High, Ca Man of High, Ca High Castle? Yeah. Uh, so he wants to come on the show. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to give any details right now, so it's just premature, but I will keep you all posted so you can stay connected on my Instagram and my Twitter, and I will make more official announcements. But we are we have a lot of guests coming up, so please stay tuned. Nick it wow. in the yeah. future. Just nick it. This, this Very exciting I'm stuff about. coming from this channel, guys. Yeah. Uh, Joe Shepard, Simone, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I, Joe, thank you for asking. I hope to continue acting and be on a very successful canonized new uh, Star Trek series. I also hope to be on a multi-franchise uh, movie uh, franchise. And I also hope to be directing and have uh, one of the most successful YouTube uh, shows <laughs> as well. Um, and I would like to continue traveling I love Southeast Asia and places like Bali and Thailand and things like that. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to be traveling and then also doing creative endeavors, continuing with art and painting uh, and just helping people as much as I can, being a good person in the community and I always hope to uplift and inspire. So, yeah, and live a good, healthy, peaceful, happy life with a lot of joy <laughs> and music and concerts, things like that. Troy, um, great question. Oh, Elihu asks, uh, can I ask Chris Judge? It's funny because that was one of my thoughts today. I was like, I should ask Chris Judge what he's up to. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah everyone would love that. Free. Um, oh, wait. Donnie Pearson. Simone, <laughs> would you appear in Star Trek Discovery or Star, Star Trek Picard or maybe the first prime timeline Star Trek movie since 2002's Nemesis? Absolutely. I'm always open to uh, working on great shows um, and sci-fi. I love sci-fi. It's a lot of fun. And either being a alien or someone in uniform. I mean, that'd be fun to do either. Thank you for the question. Oh, this is a great question. Uh, Troy Paselli asks, Simone Bailey, you said you would like to be on Star Trek. How would you feel about being a Klingon? Good How question, would you Troy. be with the language? It is so funny that you ask that because I did. Oh, I, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. There was an actor that I met briefly and we were at a party and he had to learn Klingon. And he said that it was very, very challenging. 
And he, I guess they would record like in a dictaphone, all of the, the lines for him to say, because there was a vocal coach and it's really very specific. And you would be surprised at how there's certain inflections and there is a right and a wrong. You can't just wing it. He said it was one of the hardest uh, things of, of his uh, career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know that I had to learn Chinese for like a little bit of Chinese for my role on Blood and Treasure. And again, it's the same thing. The inflection is very important and it was very <laughs> challenging to do so. But I'm always willing and I love learning. Yeah. Thailand, like a second home. I love Thailand. Yeah, it's wonderful. I just love all those turquoise beaches. I mean, not turquoise beaches, turquoise water and the beach. Uh, did I work with Roger Cross? It's funny that you ask because I have not worked with Roger Cross, but I met Roger through Sharon Taylor. And so he has become one of my friends. And then we also saw each other at a convention and he's a great hugger as well. Yeah, he's really fun, but I would love to work with him. Tips 3D, it was Chris Judge who wrote your Stargate character, Kalel. Yes, that's correct. So Christopher Judge wrote both uh, the first two episodes that I was in on Stargate SG-1, the episode Sacrifices and the episode, um, what was the other one? Birthright. Yeah, he's fantastic. I love him. Yeah, I will have to ask him to be on the show. This... Oh, Forty and Barber says, the second you stop learning, you die, I reckon. That's true. That is true. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun, and I love Sharon so much. Yeah. She is just a powerhouse. Oh, wow. You are friends. You guys have so much in common, and you guys are great friends. It's really wonderful. So that is, thank you very much. This is the dress that yeah. I do own from Blood and Treasure. Yeah. Yeah. Great picture. Yay. Yeah. I like the one where she's dancing because then you can see more of her body. And yeah, she looks sensational in that dress. Mm -hmm. It was cool. I love it. I mean, it was not me. It was makeup and wardrobe and all 